this might be a tough decision right now. My team did I'm not just absolutely um, and NFL games that were like, right. whoa. I actually don't have a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, welcome to Scrum Tone. Uh, we have another guest here on the League of the Wings. 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 Wow. We are a, a oh, couple Did we start? Yeah. You didn't say shit. <laughs> I, I hate to surprise you. I hate it. <laughs> I was just seeing your reaction if I just immediately jump into it. All right, you. so, uh, sorry. So we're a couple of days late, or yeah, a couple of days late. No, yeah. What day is it? Yeah. Just yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are going to be just doing our normal thing. There's a lot of football news, but we we were late because we have a gig in Washington D.C. and went in which we couldn't record the podcast. So that excuses, is, excuses, like always, Caleb. You know what? You know what? Shut you didn't up. give me any time to set up my mic the way I want. Sorry. So we missed all of the games on Sunday due to being at work. So we don't really know what happened in each game. So yeah, yeah, actually, we literally like didn't watch anything. The only game that I know that what happened in is the Eagles game. And that's solely because I watched the highlights and then I did reaction video. And I, wa- I, I kept up with the Colts game. And then we watched Sunday and Monday night, at least like, partially. So... Yeah, so this is going to be a shorter one. I'm hoping that we can just like buzz right through the predictions. Yeah. But there are there were some huge like storylines because it was the NFL trade line that I would want to talk about, like the Von Miller trade and then the Henry Rugg situation and Odell being released. So I guess when we hit those teams we can kinda of talk about those storylines. Wait, he got remember. released? Yeah. Like he got Odell? Made- yeah. OBJ? OBJ got released. They couldn't early. find a trade for him, and so they no. just... <laughs> yeah. Go, like, What's they the ca- point? Cause couldn't they ca- he release him at any point? Well, yeah, they just couldn't find a trade before the trade line and the trade line hit, so they can't make a trade anymore until the off season. So but why just, release him now? I, I have no idea why. He, was he just that unhappy? Well, yeah, because he was very unhappy, and he was demanding a trade because so Baker, Well, yeah, of course, Baker just doesn't have that connection with him. Yeah, and he was literally running wide open on certain plays, and Baker's Baker just... just a bad yeah. quarterback. So Odell I thought he was better, but yeah, this season proved to me that he's just not it. And that's why Odell wanted to like leave so bad, because he was just getting frustrated because he wasn't You know who he should want to play for? <laughs> Carson Wentz, league MVP. Taylor Heineke. No. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, like, I want to play for this guy. Oh, my God. All right, so... I'm Gre- going to take my talents <laughs> to Chicago. Ayo. Hey, so, I guess we can just jump right into it. Green Bay versus Arizona. This was a... Actually, we did watch the Terra Andor, at least. I don't... I think... I don't know where you were, but... You should go the- to Cincinnati. Just, like, drive over. <laughs> it's like, hey, yo, what up? Honestly, I want to go to Cincinnati with that dynasty building. Yeah. Joe Bauer. We might as well just, like... We might as well just not even go through this week. Like, what are we going to say about each matchup? Well, our uh, predictions were bad. Yeah. We were 8-7, so close well, to 50%. Well, I mean, going down is just an excuse to talk about each thing. Just I just want to say, like, who won and who lost and stuff. We can just, like, quickly go down. Go for it. The Green Bay versus Arizona game, we did watch a little bit, or at least I did. And you guessed Green Bay correctly. Or you said Green Bay correctly, but it came down to a stupid play by A.J. Green. Yeah. But... He just didn't turn around and it got intercepted to end it. But I think he's been so good this season yeah. too, and that's how his season is gonna be defined now. Yeah, it sucks. It's yeah, it's so bad. I didn't like that's so it sucks so badly because that's like their first loss and that's how they got their first loss mm-hmm. of the season. And it's sad because there were just a couple of plays from winning it because I think that if they did get a touchdown there, there they would win it. That's the only game that we watched. Um, so Tyus got that one right. I got that one run wrong. Cincinnati beat. Or Jets beat Cincinnati, which was a shocker. I don't think anyone was expecting that. I was. You were? Why didn't you pick the Jets? The one QB on the Jets bought out 400-plus yards, a few touchdowns. First, one. he's the second player to have 400-plus yards in his debut. And first one, the other one being Cam Newton. And so that was interesting. Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee beat the Colts. Uh, and a throwing overtime victory or loss. You said you kind of kept up with that. Do you have anything to say on that? What was it? Carson Wentz had two interceptions. Johnson Taylor's better than Derrick Henry. Yeah. You've been saying that all week, all year. Remember remember when I said that Derrick Henry wouldn't be able to keep up that many attempts? Yeah. I was agreeing with you. 
That, that were was, you? Yeah. I don't know if I you was, were. I was agreeing that you want to keep up. I think my hopeistic side. I was kind of feeding. Hopeistic? Yeah. Is that even a word? No. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a new word. It's a new word. I invented a new Optimistic word. Optimistic or hopeful? Yeah. But you just <laughs> put them together. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm too lazy to say either or. <laughs> oh my god. I would be lazy to even try and pronounce that. What? Jesus Christ. Okay. But uh, hopeistic I- side. <laughs> Was or I was kind of feeding into a bandwagon, and I was really just wanting him to carry on and stuff, I guess. But everyone saw this coming. Mm-hmm. His injury, at least Johnson Taylor. As much as people want Johnson Taylor to get fed more, like we saw it at least. I mean, we're kind of jumping into this week now, but um, it it, it kind of illustrates my point. He he did get like kind of beat up a little. He, he probably was games with the most carries last night yeah i think it was the game with the most carries 19 and you know he had to sit out certain drives even on a 172 yard game he had to set out certain drives because of how uh you know just shaken up he would get um and a lot of people are advocating for more carries from him but i mean as we saw last night Hines was great i don't know if mac played at all but they didn't need to Hines Hines had an amazing touchdown and a couple other good plays and uh Pittman was doing good. I think he had five catches. Tight ends were getting some good plays in. I think Granson had a had a good first down. A rookie who kind of had been underwhelming so far, and then we even had a offensive lineman get a touchdown. And once was playing phenomenal. So I feel like offensively we've been looking up, and you know everyone just wants to see more of Jonathan Taylor. But for his health, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um. And then on the other hand, you have Wentz still playing the fourth quarter after being up that big and also taking knees when we know that there's a whole trade scenario that depends on his snap counts. Like, mm-hmm. I just don't understand that. You Do they not trust Sam Ellinger to take a knee? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I don't get that at all. Um, they even had Sam Ellinger in at quarterback. Mm-hmm. To try and rush into the end zone, I believe. And even in that scenario, Wentz was playing wide out. Yeah. Like, just sit him. Like, yeah. for his his health and also the whole, like, trade scenario. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean... It's so bullshit. But then also, the defense just keeps collapsing late in games. And if it wasn't for Johnson Taylor Wentz being so phenomenal at the start of this game, like, it would have been way closer for comfort than it already did come down to and so that that's something that needs improvement on it used to be last year that it was the start of games where we were rough but then we finished games amazingly and now it's the opposite which is mm. scary but at least you know a win's a win at least yeah. yeah i mean yeah and then back to like the carson ones thing like he had a crap ton of snaps last weekend he had 80 he was 80 for 80 snaps and then this game like the jets he was 60 he played 62 out of 62 snaps which he's 597 out of 602 for this year and that's getting closer to the average or the predicted total snaps that he's going to play um i guess moving forward rams beat houston obvious win pet pittsburgh beat cleveland a little bit of a shocking win but i predict that right philly obviously beat it. the lions i guess detroit i was so so wrong in that um san fran beat, Chi- beat chicago that was kind of obvious uh panthers beat atlanta buffalo beat miami which is super obvious new england beat chargers uh seahawks beat uh jacksonville i guess seahawks correctly you guess jacksonville correctly or incorrectly, and then you cor- correctly guessed Panthers and Atlanta, and I did not. Um, Denver beat Washington. You correctly guessed Denver. Bucks beat Saints. Dallas beat Minnesota. I correctly guessed Dallas, and Kansas City Chiefs beat Jet Giants. Which the Kansas City Chiefs came very close in losing that game. That was way too close to comfort. I don't think anyone ex- was expecting the Giants to actually put up a game and then the chiefs i mean if we look the past two years though i mean this is a genuine question not rhetorical but did chiefs always blow out teams like the giants Mm -hmm. even when they were winning Mm -hmm. you think they were blowing them out i think they had some games like they obviously won a lot previous years more so than this year but did it always come down to blowouts? I don't think, like, Bills tie blowouts at the start of this year. I don't think it always came down to that. I feel like it was actually closer than people remember. 
Yeah. I guess everyone's used to or wanna everyone's used to the Chiefs just always being dominant and stuff. But I think I, they're just good at closing out games. Or yeah. like historically. Maybe not so much this year, obviously, because yeah. they're four four, but Yeah, I think it's just the Giants almost beating the Chiefs is more like heavily present or heavily look upon just due to the situation of how bad the Chiefs are playing. Exactly. So it, like, it looks yeah. more worse it's like oh my god they almost beat the giants but yeah. like to your point it's probably been that case all throughout this like kind of chiefs run yeah. which people don't really like pay attention to because they're always win and, and they're always been so good so people kind of ignore that but in this year it kind of seems more drastic just because how bad they've been playing their four they have four losses already and everyone's expecting them to be eight and oh right now exactly on, yeah. like i mean i'm looking at last season and um week two against the chargers i'm pretty sure tyra taylor was still playing for the chargers it was a 23 20 overtime they against the panthers 33 31 against the raiders 35 31 broncos 22 16 yeah Mm -hmm. dolphins 33 27 falcons 17 14 that all happened in the same like season those could have all been like losses if one drive went the wrong way yeah so i mean i feel like when we look at these sort of things like especially during prime time is like people get hyper fixated on like oh they only won by this much but i feel like any given week this kind of happens like when we get to the end of the season and i'm assuming that they'll come back and have wild card conversation Mm -hmm. um we're not going to think about oh but they only won by three against the giants like by the end of the season that's going to be like whatever yeah, and well, I mean, it just comes a little shocking too because like we're not used to Patrick Mahomes playing this badly, and they were playing poorly, too. And so yeah, I, I guess it. I guess the part that like really we should emphasize is that they only put up twenty against the Giants' defense. Yeah. I yeah. think that makes more sense to emphasize on mm-hmm. rather than the point differential. Yeah, because like Patrick Mahomes, even though he was coming close in those games last year, we always knew like he's so good. It it's not going to like he's Mm -hmm. so good that he's going to close out these like tough or close matchups yeah but with this new patrick mahomes we're not getting that so it's like oh my god like he made it this close to the giants or whatever yeah so i guess let's move on to mvp race mvp race before i start this i would like to say a prayer for derrick henry yeah um actually i won't say prayer but you 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 know just like just say that's a shame and that sucks because he was on on pace for the all-time record i highly doubted that he would even get to the mvp conversation but he was on pace and it just wasn't sustainable at the rate he was at because Mm -hmm. i mean his yards per carry wasn't amazing like obviously like one of the best in the league but it wasn't amazing uh he was just getting a lot of carries he was basically a quarterback (laughs) (laughs) with the amount of times he touched the ball so it's a bummer but yeah i took him out of honorable mentions just because you need to have games played <laughs> like yeah. first and foremost mm-hmm. um same reason why russell wilson isn't in here anymore even if he does come back later in the season that's just self-explanatory mm-hmm. it's the mvp race um cooper cup is an honorable mention still because he had a really great game um i mean that's your too it's kind of whack because like i don't know you, when you have two players on the same team in the conversation it kind of like diminishes their achievements it's like oh yeah matthew stafford's really high up but he's playing with the best wide receiver right now Mm -hmm. so like is that really an accomplishment like his numbers and then vice versa is like oh cooper cup Mm -hmm. you know he has all these like he has these big stats but he's playing with matthew stafford Mm -hmm. right now so like it can go both ways i'm Mm -hmm. just gonna keep him there because i'm assuming cooper cup isn't going to keep up this these numbers but honestly we are eight games in so i don't see like it's possible it will i just feel like it will falter at least a little bit um and and he's probably going to break some season records but it's not going to be it's not going to end up keeping him an mvp race i think Mm -hmm. at some point i'm gonna have to like cut this down to not a top 10 list but like top eight and then top six then top four Mm -hmm. i don't know at what point in the season i'll start doing that but yeah i think we're we're near halfway point we're basically there mm-hmm. so it, it's going to be interesting like who's going to f- fall off this <coughs> list not just from 
playing bad, but just not playing good enough, which is going to be interesting. So, yeah, let's get into the top 10. Justin Herbert, uh, he fell from 7 from last week. Uh, it was a... Wait, shouldn't you be doing the... Are you in the top one or... Or are you... Sorry. Are you going over week 8 or week 7? I'm I'm talking about MVP race. Justin Herbert is at 10 and he fell from 7. Okay. Well, I mean, like... Like, I mean, like, week 8, like... Are yeah. you talking... I'm, I'm talking about week 8, because on week 8, he's at 10, and I said he yeah. fell from 7. Wait, don't we... I mean, like, don't we usually do, like, the current week for it? This, this is the current week. I'm confused. Well, I mean, like, because we use it, usually do it, like, this is this week, but we usually do it on, like, week 7, because, like, that's the week that everyone played. Wait, week 8 just happened. We're going on to week 9. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh. I thought we were on week seven. Oh no. wait, my bad. Sorry, <laughs> I, I was so I don't, confused. Sorry, I, <laughs> I was like, what? I got my weeks mixed up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, time flies by. Yeah. So Justin Herbert's at ten. He fell from seven. Uh, the, the Chargers are four three right now. I don't know. That, that division's very interesting right now. Mm-hmm. Cause like, where are the Broncos now? They're uh four four as well. They're all basically at the same record. I mean Raiders, yeah five two actually so it's a bit better but yeah it's like everyone's just one game behind that's gonna be interesting because like if broncos <laughs> like broncos aren't out of it yet like i don't see them like getting their shit together but if they do like they're not out of it yet whereas like colts is kind of hard because they're many games down from the titans and also they lost twice to the titans so it's like they're out they kind of like are having a hard time like trying to get back in the division but mm-hmm. anyways that's not mvp race related but it's going to be something to look out for if, you know, something crazy happens. Like, any anyone, any team in that division could take it, I feel like, as of this moment. Like, no one's out yet. Uh, Joe Burrow at 9. Uh, yeah, I guess he moved up, even though it was a loss, because he put up pretty good numbers, three touchdowns. He did have another interception, but overall his touchdown-turnover ratio has gotten better, but mm-hmm. that's not saying much. Let's see. Derek Carr at eight also five he's now five two i don't know oh he had a bye week so it's not really important to talk about him uh lamar jackson at seven also a bye week dak prescott at six he did not play but was, so far it's just one game so i'm wondering like he fell from four now he's at six like if i don't know if he plays and doesn't play another game i might have to drop him even more maybe just put him honorable mentions because i mean he's been putting up pretty good numbers like he's leading in accuracy right now he took that from Kyler murray Mm because of his bad game but yeah i think he could have a chance to like really like if he continues his numbers and they stay consistent even with two games out he might mm-hmm. still have a chance in the MVP race. We'll see. I think two games is very recoverable for the MVP race. Yeah. Uh, Josh Allen, 5-2. He did play. I, it's hard to remember, like, how they did or whatever. I'm just, like, looking at numbers without context. He got t- three touchdowns and uh, didn't add another turnover. So that helped his t- touchdown turnover ratio a lot more from 4.25 to 5 now. Uh, but he's not at the same level as Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. who is now at 19 touchdowns and only three turnovers, three interceptions. So he's at a 6.33 touchdown ratio. Yeah, uh, leading these quarterbacks at least, probably the league. I don't know where Kirk Cousins is at, but I'm pretty sure he had a bad game. So not, no point in talking about him. He's out of the conversation, if I didn't mention that before. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers went up to, up to number four. Uh, then the probably the biggest part of this is the top three. Because Tom Brady and Kyler Murray both had pretty yucky losses <laughs> and dropped, whereas Matthew Stafford had a really great win. And so now I'm playing it. Matthew Stafford at one, but honestly, I want to say tied for first Matthew Stafford and Tom Brady. Whereas Kyler Murray, like, I think the biggest thing about Kyler Murray was that he was undefeated. Um, still putting up pretty good numbers, but nothing like amazing, especially the fact that he has seven interceptions that really will kind of tank him in the end. But, uh, now he's not undefeated. It's really hard to put him over the top when you have Tom Brady and Matthew Stafford playing like they are. Um, Tom Brady at six, two. So it's not really the same as Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, but, uh, he's leading quarterbacks and touchdowns and passing yards. So that's fine. And only has five interceptions. Yep. Um, which is actually like kind of average amongst this group, but, uh, Matthew Stafford at four interceptions, no fumbles. So he's second in touchdown turnover ratio. He's really, uh, he's definitely doing 
uh, a lot better and like total volume and like passing yards and stuff. That was something he struggled with before. Uh, he's high up there in touchdowns. His accuracy is not like one of the best out of this group, but it's definitely up there. Yeah, I just I feel like right now he's the. I guess he's the front runner. Yeah, just like well rounded and stuff like that. Whereas Tom Brady's putting up just a bit more like peak numbers Mm -hmm. yeah so it'll be interesting to see like i feel like the that top five will probably remain whereas the other five slash and plus cooper cup will fall dwindle down i can imagine josh allen really starting to make a run Mm -hmm. at this point in the season aaron Rodgers just needs a little bit more like I don't even know play. It seems like the, the Packers are depending a lot more on rushing, so like Aaron Rodgers has that going against him. But if he can start tossing the ball a bit more, I feel like he'll definitely catch up to the top three. So yeah, that's my update. Update. Now let's get to the predictions. We are. Should we restart the camera? No, but like, because it's at two twenty-two minutes, so we still got like. You think we can get through this right now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. All right. Let's just see, cause I, cause like. I, I still want to talk about, like, Bob Miller and, like... Oh, then we bit. might as well, like, reset yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Just, like, before we jump into a new section. Yeah. See, Titus, this is why I have you on, because you're the brains of the operation. Mm-hmm. Predictions. So, due to being late, we missed, we missed predicting that Colts-Jets game, but Titus did, in fact, pick the Colts, and I was going to pick the Jets solely because... I of- mean, this was, like, obvious for me, but I was surprised you picked the Jets. Yeah, because I just thought that that one quarterback that was doing really hot would heat up more so, and he got injured. But Yeah, I thought he was going to come back in the middle of the game, but he ended up not. And But John Johnson, bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I, that, like, this game was like a, like, it was a blowout, but, like, Jets were, like, coming back a little bit i don't they were obviously weren't gonna come back but like neither damn. neither defense has an excuse for the way they played yeah <laughs> like, it was bad yeah i just thought the jets defense could wrap up the colts offense a little bit more and i just thought that just how i've seen like the colts play in the last half of the game i just thought that the jets could pl- have a couple of plays go their mm-hmm. way and then have like one of those like crazy upset wins on the season no but, that's already happened to the colts we don't need another this soon <laughs> yeah but yeah, that, that's why I picked the Jets. But all right, moving forward, New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons. I picked the Saints. What? Yeah. You're finally, you're finally going to the Falcons. Why did you make this? Um, one? Yeah, I always say I'm never going to choose the Falcons. But at the same time, I'm not a New Orleans fan by any means either. How did New Orleans do last game? They lost to. Oh wait, no, they beat Tampa Bay, didn't they? I forget. Thirty six, twenty seven. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I wrote that wrong in my on the week eight thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I just don't have like I I think New Orleans is just like five two is such a weird thing to think about with this New Orleans team. Like they shouldn't be there. Yeah. You know, wasn't a different player. It was a different quarterback for the Saints this time, right? It wasn't Jameis. Yeah, because he got Trevor hurt. or something. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Trevor? Do we know who Trevor is, or is it just some random like quarterback? I'm pretty sure it's Trevor Simeon. Oh, dude, the guy who played for the Broncos, the legend. Sure, I don't know this, but he's yeah, he's so led. He's a fucking, <laughs> he's a fucking legend. But that wait is what is Winston out for the season? Didn't he? Ter- yeah, I, I, I have no idea, dude. I think I think Jameis Winston is out for this season with a uh, ACL. Mm. What? Okay, so when I okay I looked up Jameis Winston's stats and it brings up fucking Philip Rivers. Should Philip Rivers come out of retirement to play? Oh right, yeah. yeah. People have been talking about that because he said he wouldn't. He would consider it if they called him up. Oh, that would be really exciting. Yeah. But yeah, I think Winston's out for the season, and yeah, he was playing really good comparatively to how he's played for the beginning of the year. But yeah, it's going to be interesting how that whole team moves forward. But. Denver first Dallas. I got Dallas Cowboys being Denver Broncos. I just don't see the Broncos shaping enough pieces together to get a win here. 
Yeah, I I think Dallas has been playing pretty well even without Dak. So I don't know. I just think they they have it in them. Actually, last game was kind of messy, but yeah, I don't think Denver has proven that they don't play messy either. So yeah, I think it'll be a similar situation with the Vikings, where it's just like a team that's kind of average, just not being able to pull their weight against a backup, mm-hmm. <laughs> just for whatever reason. Um, and Dallas defense has been proven to be pretty consistent so far. I don't think Denver really has a any threat against Dallas right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think so either. Panthers first, New England Patriots. I had the Panthers being the Patriots, but honestly, this was such a coin flip. I did not know which one to pick. Out of the Patriots, they've been looking a lot better than the Panthers within the past three, four games, I feel like. Panthers have kind of been tanking. They just got a win against Falcons, but... Uh, how did New England do in their game? I haven't, I haven't looked. Oh, they beat the Chargers. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. 27-24. Yeah. I got a New England one. And then next game, we got Baltimore versus Minnesota. Honestly, this was more of a coin flip, to be honest. I don't know why. Nah, I, I disagree. I think really? it was clearly Baltimore. Just after seeing how Minnesota played and how Baltimore yeah, has been playing. Yeah. It's just it's clear to me, personally. And yeah. they're co- Baltimore's coming off a bye week and playing at home. like. Yeah. I mean, the only reason why I say that is due to how they played against the Cincinnati Bengals, but I guess that is a divisional match where it's going to be a lot closer than it should be, I guess, or, yeah, yeah. or less more dominant, I guess. But then we got Cincinnati Bengals versus Cleveland Browns. I have the Cincinnati Bengals because Cleveland is just looking like a mess, honestly. I have Cleveland. I don't, I, I don't trust Cincinnati. I don't really trust Cleveland either, but... I think Cleveland can pull themselves together. Um, I mean, yes, they just released OBJ, but OBJ hasn't been a factor either. So, like, I don't think that's going to change anything. If anything, that's probably going to put a wide receiver on the field that will actually get considered by Mayfield. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, it just won't be a waste of space. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's hard because Cincinnati has had good wins, but at the same time, they've had weird losses. And it's just, like, I can never tell with them. And with Cleveland, I just feel like that team is, player-wise, they have so many good pieces. Mm -hmm. If the running backs can be healthy, then they have a chance for sure. That's what it comes down to, probably. Um, I don't know if what what the status on them is. Who has them? Um, Nick Chubb looks like he's playing. Nick Chubb looks like he's playing, so that's a good sign already. Mm -hmm. And then who's the other guy? Hunt? Yeah. Who has Hunt? Hunt. I don't know who has Hunt. I want to say Gladia, possibly, but I could be better Oh, no, it's wrong. Josh, right? Oh, it's Josh? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, that sounds right. Let's see. How is, how, how is it? He's still an IR. But Nick Chubb alone will be fine. So, yeah. I, I have I have a little bit of confidence in this, but at the same time, I can easily see myself being wrong. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Um, and the next game is Buffalo versus Jacksonville. I have Buffalo. No, no really need to go into that. Houston Texans. First, the Miami Dolphins is an exciting game for an Eagles fan because, wow, you have Miami. I guess that's due to being the Texans just being in the same division as the Colts. No. Or, it has nothing oh. to do with that, actually. I actually just think Houston has been playing way worse. Oh, okay. Like, Miami has been bad, but Houston mm-hmm. has been way worse. Miami actually had a redeemable performance, uh, I feel like. Well, maybe not so much against Buffalo, but what was... Uh, yeah, against Atlanta, I thought that loss was actually like, oh, shit, their offense can get shit moving. Even mm-hmm. in London, actually, there was, like, mm-hmm. it, there was like a lot of high hope for them. But then Houston, these... I don't know. Like, since their win, they've just been kind of like... Mm-hmm. Like, 31-5 against Arizona. Yikes. Um, yeah, that makes sense. They just... I don't, I just don't trust their offense at all, and I know nothing about their defense, honestly. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just feel like I know more about Miami's like redeemable sides as a one seven team than yeah. Houston as a one seven team. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's that really all sense. it comes down to. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the last thing I'll say about this is that this is a good game for the Eagles because if Houston wins, then like that just gives more capital to the Eagles because. That means that the Miami Dolphins will be one and eight, and Houston Texans will be two and seven, which is a higher draft pick for us. So Las Vegas versus Giants. I have Las Vegas because they're just a better team, and Giants are just no. Yeah, I have Las Vegas too. I guess the biggest topic from this is that Henry Ruggs was drank and then drove 
and went 150 miles per hour and hit someone and killed them. And it's just a fucked up situation. Like, never, never, ever go into a car drunk, especially yeah. to that degree, because it's never going to end well. It's just, I just feel so bad for the family of the person who died, and she just shouldn't have died for that stupid of reason, or just died in general. But yeah, it was a messed up situation. And he got immediately released. So, yeah. Actually, it wasn't that immediately. Oh, really? <laughs> um, the Raiders sent out a post saying, like, we were analyzing the situation. The just fuck? wanting more details. And then a day after that, they released him. Dang. That's kind of looking messed up. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how it's worked with every DUI situation yeah. in the yeah. NFL. No one's ever gotten immediately released. Yeah. They just wanted to make sure, like, which is fucked up. I guess they're trying to find a way to victim blame like if something came out that she was also drunk i don't know mm -hmm. like there's i'm sure there's ways they could have turned that in their favor but there's just nothing so yeah because henry ruggs like had high hopes from the raiders organization but he hasn't been a major factor i don't feel like mm -hmm. so yeah he was like really good at the deep threat that's mm -hmm. what yeah. i was getting from that jesus sorry <laughs> for that headphone users r.i.p headphone users but yeah, it's a sad situation that shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. Los Los Angeles Chargers first Philadelphia Eagles. I have the Chargers, just because they're just such a more well well rounded team than the Eagles, and the Eagles are just struggling at this point. Chargers at four three is interesting. I thought they would have. They'll probably come out like at the end of the season with a better looking record, but as of right now, it's still a bit like on edge. Mm -hmm. I feel like Justin Herbert has been a bit volatile. Yeah, they got a two-loss streak going. So, Ooh. yeah, um, moving forward, Green Bay Packers versus Kansas City Chiefs. I feel like the Packers are going to win, and I'm going to even emphasize that they might even destroy the Kansas City Chiefs just because of how bad that Chiefs defense is and how bad Patrick Mahomes is playing. Like, I feel like Patrick Mahomes is struggling in the next bad defenses and Green Bay Packers not – they have a pretty decent defense. They don't have the best, but I feel like they're going to have make a hard time for Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers is just going to light up the field with that. Um, hold on, I'm just doing a little bit of research as I scroll through <laughs> um, just to make this point because I think I'm on the right track. I just want to make sure. I believe in you. Yes. Um, Kansas City has yet to play a rookie quarterback this season damn because jordan love will be starting mm -hmm. as we know uh aaron Rodgers tested positive for covid um there seems <laughs> to be a lot of rookie quarterbacks starting as of right now um well not necessarily because zach wilson's out but uh this season like a lot of been given chances and i feel like they've all kind of been looking meh to start with especially like first game jitters um the nice thing about Jordan Love is that he's had a year to prepare for this, I guess, which is, like, maybe you could have a bit more confidence in him. But from what I've seen out of Jordan Love in practices and, like, I don't know, preseason games, there's not, like, a lot of, I don't know, hype around how he would play post-Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Like, it seems like they still want to give him a chance, um, which is fair. Like, he hasn't really been given a chance in a regular season game. But I don't think he's going to immediately come out and, you know, tear a team apart. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Chiefs will have a fine time against them. As bad as they've played, I feel like any defense would probably have a, a better time against Jordan Love right now. Just because it is his first game. So he's mm -hmm. going to take time to have to improve. Is Devontae Adams playing? Do we mm -hmm. know this? He's, he's not. not. Yeah. Well, shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's going to be hard. Because uh, the backup wide receivers on Green Bay have... I mean, they kind of have proven themselves a little because, mm -hmm. what, the Green Bay's one win last week. It's, like, all a bunch of players that hadn't played too much other than Randall Cobb, but Randall Cobb's way past his prime. It's just going to be interesting, but I have more faith in Kansas City just because, as an organization, they are, we all say this, like, they are better than this, but at some point they have to start looking mm -hmm. better than this and i just feel like this is a golden opportunity like it's basically been handed to them mm -hmm. you know with aaron Rodgers being out so why not i feel like yeah that makes sense um i for i honestly forgot that aaron Rodgers was not playing this game <laughs> i honestly like i completely forgot like that storyline and i didn't like take that into consideration 
I thought it was Aaron Rodgers, and then Adams was out, but I just thought that he could tear it up. But that kind of whole storyline is kind of funny but messed up at the same time because that whole situation, how the NFL handled his, like, COVID, not COVID vaccine, but it wasn't a COVID vaccine. Like, it was his own randomly cure for the disease. That wasn't actually a cure. It was just... It, it was all confusing and the NFL just like let it go because he's a superstar. They're like, all right, you're, you're, you're vaccinated. And it, Damn. so like he was wearing on, like on mask, whatever and stuff. And it was just a whole clusterfuck. That was one of the big storylines that I forgot to mention in the beginning, but yeah, it was just interesting to see. And a lot, I feel like a lot of big storylines have been in this past week. There's a lot of big ones that came out just with, yeah. But, um, let's move forward. Arizona Cardinals first. San Fran, I have Arizona Cardinals. I do yeah. as well. Even uh, though, yeah, yeah I, I, San Francisco hasn't been good. Yeah, and even though Arizona lost last week, it's not like they played bad. They're literally a couple of plays from winning, so it's not like George Kittle might be back though. Ooh, he's Georgie. getting off of IR, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he will be playing. So yeah, then we got Rams Tennessee. I have the Rams winning, just because of Von Miller. Von Miller got traded. To the Rams, the Denver Broncos are going to be paying for uh, I mean, whatever left. Is. I don't think Von Miller will be an immediate All Star on the Rams, yeah. and also oh, that wait. defense, yeah. like just the way that defense works, like that. I think they've got like under control. <laughs> like yeah. they don't need another All Star; it just happened to work out in their favor. So I just feel like the Rams' defense has been good this year, and uh, without Henry on the Titans' side, is this very yeah. obvious? Like, yeah. Where the Titans going to be able to get it done? Like, this is a terrible matchup for them the first week without Henry. Yeah, yeah. And I I just remember this, but Von Miller is not going to play against this oh, game. Well. So, yeah. That, <laughs> that, the statement that I said is irrelevant, but... <laughs> it's still interesting, though, the trade and how cheap they got Von Miller because Broncos are still paying for the whatever is left of this year, this contract, which really plays out for Rams. Um, Pittsburgh versus Chicago, I picked Pitt. Why? I have Chicago. Why you got Chicago? Um, Justin Fields in his last game looked a bit better, I think. Mm. I mean, nothing crazy, but he was scoring, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> man. Like, I just feel like uh, with Pittsburgh at their current state, um, they've been getting lucky. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like, I just feel like there's so much about that team that should be going wrong but isn't. And eventually it'll just not work out in their favor. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think Chicago prime time just needs a little victory to get themselves through the rest of the season. Yeah. And why not? I agree. Why not? Why the fuck not? And um, none of those are good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> like they're pretty like undeveloped, but at the same time, I haven't really had a chance to see either team's last game, so. And I want the Bears to win, too. I, just, yeah. I don't know. It was just kind of a corn flip, honestly. Yeah. If you want, I'm going to just quickly go over the fantasy real quick. Just the transactions, because I did do a few transactions, and you did, too. Um, I'm starting from the 27th of October and down on. So, Sophia added Cardinals defense, dropped Washington's defense. Sophia added Tyler Bass and dropped Jason Sanders. Titus dropped Moali Cox. Brendan dropped Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Sophia dropped Corey Davis, added Jared Cook. I added Emmanuel Sanders and dropped Antonio Brown. Brendan added Miles Gaston. Titus added Michael Carter, dropped Daryl Williams. I dropped JD McKissick. Added Adrian Peterson. I dropped Michael Thomas. And I added Devontae Booker. And I the reason why I added Devontae Booker is because also a big headline too is Saquon Barkley did <laughs> has COVID now. So coming off of injury, he was expected to play this week. But he got COVID and is going to be out for the next couple of weeks. So I took advantage of that. And Booker has been playing pretty well. And I guess a little drama. I, I wanted Carter, but uh, Titus took it from me. And I was salty. Um, he didn't really have a good game against Colts, but yeah, um, I, that's, that's all I have to say. I, this is the second time this year that I had the most amount of points amongst anyone in the league and which I'm really excited about solely because I never led the league in scoring last year and I'm just proud of where my team is and it's kind of making me more relieved or like more 
like cautious because I'm still in like in the in the playoff race in which I thought I was out as I thought I was going to be out. But do you have anything to say about fantasy, or do you want to wrap it up? I'm a god. Huh? I'm a god. You're a god, dude. How the fuck is your team so good? You already have 52 points. Fucking this guy, he has 52 points with Jonathan Taylor. After Pittman. one game this yeah. week. Yeah. Um. Actually, no. My last week was terrible. I just happened to play someone who was also playing terrible, which mm-hmm. was Brendan, who should neither of us should be playing like this. Um. Yeah. I just managed to have a bit more consistency on my players. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's look at this. I also my only loss was against Brendan, and before this game, that was the two scores that we had like our two worst scores yeah. of the season and it was both like hovering a bit over over 100 mm-hmm. so this was way worse because i was at, i won with 89.1 that's really weird i think i guess it was you two were kind of due to have bad games because mm-hmm. i feel like in fantasy if you have a lot of good games in a row your players aren't going to perform like good every week so you're kind of destined to have bad games wait how do you win oh um, wait i was looking at projected real quick uh <laughs> dumb ass Dummy. Yeah, Dummy. it makes sense. I think I just had better performances out of my main running backs, and he just... Yeah, oh my god, my wide receivers did so bad. Jefferson and Williams, 3.1, 2.9. Damn, the, the fuck? Is the this? fuck is that ah, shit? Moving on. Just no, yeah. no point in talking about this. My yeah. Nick Volk as a kicker is so good. <laughs> I can't believe I have a Patriot on my team, but honestly, like, he's just been so fucking good. Ayo... He said three ten plus games. Damn, I'll trade you Devonte Adams for him. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Bye. What? That was it? I thought you wanted to talk about trade deadline shit. Oh wait, I well, I mean I did, but like we kind of like already talked. Oh. That was more so like if we didn't really talk throughout it, and stuff. Or I guess what other kind of stuff. Never mind. I, yeah. I thought you I thought you had a plan. I was just Oh no. I like kidding. I wanted to talk about like kind of the big headlines with like Von Miller and stuff. And I I was going to like bring them up while we were talking about like each predicting each game. That's mm-hmm. kind of how I segmented like I didn't Stop the, explaining yourself, I'm bored. <sighs> My god, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking throw you out the window and <sighs> get a new host. Should I, I'm gonna have Brendan as a new host. The real champ of this league. Uh, real champ of this yeah, league. Yeah. Yeah. He's the real. He's gonna win. Real yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. You think he's bad because he lost two in a row? Well, he's he's gonna have a comeback. I only do this show with mm. the best of the best. Okay. I can't have no slackers on this podcast. Okay. Yeah. Seven win streak. One win streak. <laughs> How's it feel? Pretty good actually, because when I win the championship, it's going to feel that much better. I don't want to have an easy, easy coast to yeah. the championship. Yeah, fair enough. No. Yeah. When I beat the best team in the league in the championship, I'm like, damn, no one was expecting me to win. Honestly, I think the f- it really is like the first three spots are locked up because it says that Josh is on 91% playoff chance. So yeah. it's really just comes down to that one spot left taken by Alicia herself, who still has Tom Brady with a bye in our matchup <laughs> together. So she's probably going to lose. But... <laughs> 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 I don't want to say anything to her. But Why? I like, uh, but I I feel like I should. Oh, I, I will. Yeah, I will. I feel like it's yeah. better if I do because I'm also playing here, so it would be more scummy if I didn't. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will message her. Okay. Gracias. All right, let's wrap this up because yeah, this was a productive podcast. Bye. 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 How long was that? Forty six minutes. Forty seven minutes. <laughs> it, <laughs> As I thought. Yeah. It. It was at like 46.59 when I said that.
Oh, oh, oh.